That's the one and only Liza Minnelli singing one of the many songs that made her a legend. Jane Pauley found Liza in a smaller setting earlier this year, and it's one of our Sunday best. Embrace me, my sweet embrace. We caught up with Liza Minnelli, where she's most at home. Embrace me. At the piano with Michael Feinstein and a tune by George and Ira Gershwin. My sweet embrace. You. Still the one and only Liza. Yet even now, uncertain of her own immeasurable gifts, do you recognize that you have achieved the status of legend? No, I have to be told a lot. Like I keep saying to Michael, is that all right? You know, I had great people around me. The biggest thing I got was to recognize somebody else's talent. So long as I care for no one knows Liza like Michael Feinstein, her best friend and confidant. I mean, we met each other and were joined at the hip. You understand human nature better than almost anyone I know. Oh, I think you. that's one of the extraordinary things about her. I think that's why she's a great artist, because she's able to channel a fundamental understanding of the human condition into her art. But the world goes round. It takes talent. Tenacity. Originality to become a star. Bye bye, my neighbor. But the great ones have an undefinable something that endures. And Liza had it from the start. Proudly marching along She won her first Tony in her teens. It's gotta happen. And both an Oscar. It's Liza with the Z, not Lisa with an S, because Lisa with an S goes not Z. And an Emmy in a single year. Simple as can be, see Liza. The Grammy Legend Award made it a grand slam. Fame was practically her birthright. She was just a toddler when she appeared with her mother, Judy Garland, in the movie musical, In the Good Old Summertime. I thought my mother was perfect, perfect. Every little thing she did. But my father, there was no one in the world like my father. And I'm so much like him. Film director Vincent Minnelli was a Hollywood giant in his day. Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly, Kay Thompson were literally household names. I grew up around all these wonderful people, and yet my parents always said to me, no, nah, <laughs> you're your own. There's nobody like you. And you At 17, she began to see it herself. I remember my first gig was in a show called Best Foot Forward, off-Broadway. And I mean off-Broadway, right? I don't know, I just knew then that from the minute I walked on stage, I wasn't me. I was the person that I knew so much about because I had thought so much about her habits, about her thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Liza Minnelli. And then, November 1964, London's famed Palladium. Judy Garland filled the house, but her teenage daughter was a revelation. And not just to the audience. But my mom was my mom. You know, other people think of her as Judy Garland. That's mama. If I get frightened, I'd look at her and she would somehow know. And she would calm me down, just by her look. 
Judy Garland died five years later. Four months before the premiere of The Sterile Cuckoo in 1969, Liza's Oscar-nominated performance at 23. I even apologized to Helen, Helen Upshaw. Listen to me. And I told Lillian Learned that I didn't know that she wore dentures, that it was just an accident and a coincidence. I don't even remember Listen, saying it about Bill and Helen. I mean, just give me another chance, okay? Oh, yes. There's one take. Which is astonishing. But I knew that character so well. And I really tried to get that part, and thank God I did. Come blow your horn, start celebrating. Right this way, your table's waiting. What good's permitting? In 1972, she shifts into a higher orbit and credits a Frenchman. Charles Gasselor changed my life. He changed my entire life. Aznavour, who some call the greatest entertainer of the 20th century, taught her how to deliver a song. Because I wasn't a good singer. I was not. And I knew because my mom was the best in the world. But I went to see Charles Aznavour, and he sang a song. But it wasn't his voice that got me. What got me was why he was singing it. I just thought, that's what I want to do. It helps me to think a thought or two and pass it right along to you. And just for starters, you should know, I think, you've let yourself go. He told that story through the song. Life is a cabaret, old chum. Aznavour even helped shape her Oscar-winning performance in Bob Fosse's film version of Cabaret. I love that thing. I did it. I learned it from Aznavour, right? Fosse noticed, too. And I did that, and he went, I thought, oh, it's good. Maybe I can add something to it he'll like even more. And that's where that came from. Fosse also directed TV's Liza with a Z, dressed by Halston, wearing that iconic pixie cut. Maybe this time I'll win. She brought the house down. At the end of it, the show is over, and there's a shot off stage now. And the look on your face is, it's uncertain, it's not happy, it's not joyful. I don't know what it is. It's usually, and I say it to Michael, we go off and we're just in the mood and everything, and we'll stop and I'll say, was I all right? It's that simple. Was I all right? Mama may have, and Papa may have, but God bless the child that's got if she was born to the spotlights, there was the dark side, too. Following her mother down the road to addiction, there were also failed marriages and miscarriages, all captured by the prying eye of the paparazzi. Liza is collaborating with Michael Feinstein as executive producer of his latest album called Gershwin Country and producing his new tour celebrating Judy Garland's 100th birthday this year. One thing I know. At 76, Liza Minnelli doesn't perform in public that often. So this is something special. I am my own best friend. When I'm singing to an audience, I'm not singing to an audience. I'm singing to you. What I want to say to the audience is, have you ever felt like this? Because it's what I'm going through now. I just want people to know that I've been through what they've been through. 